Today on Craft Table, we're planning a picnic. We'll be creating a super simple DIY picnic basket. And the kids and I will be creating these adorable bug chick clips and tablecloth weights. Let's get crafting. My name is Kristen Gambasini, and this is Craft Table. One of my family's favorite activities to do on a warm, sunny summer day is to go on a picnic. Whether it's at the park or down at the gazebo at the square or even just in our own front yard, we love to pack a lunch and eat it outside. I've learned a couple tips and tricks through the years on the best way to have a picnic with a family my size. Most picnic baskets aren't big enough to hold all of our food and drinks. And a lot of people actually have that problem too because picnic baskets seem to be pretty small in size. So what we're gonna make today is our picnic basket using a very inexpensive laundry basket. I think I got this for $2 at the store. It's a perfect solution. It's gonna come out adorable. You'll love it. But first, I wanna give you my best picnic trick. We took two old sheets, which we had up in the closet. We never used them. I think they were for a bed size that we didn't even have. Probably somebody gave them to us secondhand. And I sewed them together. And then in the corners, I actually took three marbles, which we, we happen to have a lot of marbles around here, but they are inexpensive to find at the craft store. And I folded the corner of this picnic blanket in, and I sewed the marbles inside of each of the four corners. This is our blanket for when we go on picnics. It's sheet size, I'm pretty sure it's a queen size, so it's plenty big enough for all of us to sit together. And the marbles help hold the blanket down onto the grass, so if it's a windy day, you don't have to worry about your blanket being blown up onto your food or just making a mess. I can't tell you how many times we've had like chips flying through the air because we weren't prepared for the windy day. So that's my favorite trick, super easy to do. You obviously need to know how to use a sewing machine, but you will appreciate this, trust me, if you can have one of these to throw in your basket. So let's make our picnic basket. So what I have here is some fabric. Now you can buy fabric at the fabric store. What I like to do for projects like this is go to the Goodwill or the Salvation store, secondhand store, and find a large tablecloth um, or even a curtain, something pretty, something that has the design you're looking for. I thought this looked really summery and fun. It's kind of like a buffalo check yellow. And so what I did was I, gonna measure out how much fabric I need for my basket. Now when I picked my basket, I made sure that the basket I bought had large openings. Square or circle, doesn't matter. You just wanna make sure that they're fairly large openings on the side to be able to do this project. So I have already measured out my fabric here and as you can see, I've cut them using a pair of really sharp fabric scissors. Fabric scissors are the way to go when you're cutting any sort of fabric. It's just gonna be a cleaner cut. It's gonna be easier to do. So as you can see, the fabric I cut fits around the basket and then there's a little bit extra, which is totally fine. So I'm going to take it and I'm just going to start weaving this piece which I cut as well about the same size as the square opening. I'm gonna start weaving it through these openings. And I think I'm gonna skip a square each time since we have an uneven amount of squares on each side of the basket. So I'll just skip this one. I'll skip this one and come through here. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this. If you put your fabric in and you decide you don't like the way it looks, Pull it out, do it again, keep on doing it until you have the look that you want. It's, we're just, we're decor, we're kind of upgrading this basket to make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more trendy to go on a picnic. That's all we're doing. So once you have your fabric all the way through on all the sides that you want, and actually, seeing here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it around because I've decided I actually want to be able to cover this side part of the basket with the fabric. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm actually gonna skip three squares. And see what I mean about changing it and deciding what's gonna work best as you're working. 
depends on how big your squares or circles are. It might depend on your fabric. So just make it work to how you want it to look. Come through on this one. Come back around. And we have one more side to do. And you know, the, the great thing about using this type of basket as well is the fact that it's plastic. So if you are putting your food in here and it spills, you're not dealing with a spill in a wicker basket or even a fabric lined basket, which makes a pretty big difference when you're packing things like sippy cups and chocolate milk and apple juice and maybe even fruit that might be a little liquidy that could spill. So that's just something that is an added bonus for this. And remember what I said that I changed it around. So I'm going to pull this back out, come around, come back and then come over. So here we are kind of at a crossroads where our fabrics meet. So I'm actually just going to hot glue this. I'm going to hot glue this piece of fabric to my plastic and wrap it around on the inside to secure it. And then I'll hot glue this piece around so it matches and you won't see the seam really. All right, so I'm gonna pull it in. I'm gonna flip it here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna take a layer of glue. My hot glue is crazy hot, so I always wanna make sure when I'm using it with something Thin, like a fabric or a paper that I'm not directly touching it with my fingers because I have been burnt so many times. Okay, so we have that one on. And then this piece, again, I'm just gonna cut. I can see about right here. If I cut here, I think it'll line it up pretty well. So I'm gonna cut off my extra piece here. And again, these are fabric scissors. My kids know mom freaks out if you use fabric scissors on paper because it makes the fabric scissors not as sharp. And they always make fun of me, but it is a thing and it's true. So if you buy a good pair of fabric scissors, make sure everybody knows not to use it to cut paper or to make crafts with that aren't fabric. So I'm just kind of readjusting it. I'm gonna pull it over. And actually for this one to give it an even better finished look, what I'll probably do is fold this unfinished edge in right before I glue it. So again, I'm just gonna come down with hot glue. I've honestly yet to find something, I've yet to find anything that I can't fix with hot glue. I don't, I, I, I don't know if there is anything that can't be fixed with hot glue, right? Okay, so we have that done. Already looking cute, it's looking bright, it's looking fun. I'm gonna finish this second layer real quick. So I have my second layer in and I've hot glued it just the same way on the inside and the outside as we did the first top layer. This is the part where I'm just gonna go through and kind of fix it up and make it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more finished. And the easiest thing to do is just take the fabric, fold it up, your unfinished edge, and we'll just add a dab of hot glue on each of these inside plastic pieces to hold the fabric in place. And I'll show you what I mean real quick right here. So I'm gonna flip this down so you can see. I'll lift this up. I'm gonna put right here a little bit of hot glue, and then I'm gonna take my fabric, fold it in, and put it on top of the hot glue so it stays in place. And I'll do this all the way around. So on the outside, it's a finished folded edge, no um, pieces and, and uh, threads from cutting the fabric, which is not a big deal. This is kind of an optional step. You certainly don't have to do this part, um, especially certain fabrics might even look cute with the threads and having it be a little bit more unfinished. This fabric, I feel like, definitely needs a finished look. So to each their own, however you want to do it. And we got that side. All right, so I'm happy with that. Now, what I would love to do is take some painter's tape and I would tape around this top here, maybe cover this part with newspaper, grab some yellow spray paint and spray paint this yellow or this top 
part yellow. I think that would make it pop and be so cute. So that's an idea that you can do as well. Obviously I can't do it on camera because I'd have to take the spray paint outside, but an option for sure. And again, whatever color would coordinate with your basket. And if you didn't want to get the spray paint inside, you could easily just fill this basket up with balls of newspaper or plastic bags or something just to cover the inside as you're spray painting. The final step is the handles. Now, I like to use the, it's sisal rope a lot of times or jute, jute rope, whatever you wanna call it. You can find it, you can even find it at Home Depot in the painting section. You can find it at the hardware store. It's sturdy, it's good for carrying things like this. It's a great idea. You could use ribbon. Um, you could use regular rope. I mean, really, it is up to you what you would want to use for the handles because they would all be attached the same way I'm going to show you right now. So here I have my sisal rope. It's very coarse. It's very rough. These are probably about 30 inches in length or so. You guys know I don't like to measure stuff when I'm crafting. I just kind of do in a roundabout. But so I'm going to make sure they're the same length. So what I'm going to do is just cut this one to size and then I'm going to pick which side I want as my carrying sides and actually what I'll do is I'll probably, I'm going to try to pick my side that has the hot glue and everything already and basically you're just going to work this through your openings here. You've got your holes, we're going to work it through the top, pull it out and knot it. We're not putting anything crazy heavy in here. When I think of picnics, I'm thinking of sandwiches, I'm thinking of chips, uh, maybe some cookies and a couple juice boxes, uh, something like that. I mean, if you're doing a little bit more of a romantic spread and you have wine and heavier things, maybe some cheese blocks and things like that, you'd really, really wanna make sure that your handles are tight. Um, but for what we're doing, these handles are perfect. So just keep that in mind when you're creating this for your picnic. Okay, so I'm just gonna tie this here. I would wanna do a double knot to make sure it's really tight. And with this sisal rope or jute rope, it's really just a matter of tugging and pulling and tugging and pulling on your knot a little bit at a time until all of these fibers get really tight. It's not the easiest to work with when it comes to knotting it, but once you get a good knot, it should stay in pretty good. Another tip with this jute rope or sisal rope is once you have your knot in place, you can add some hot glue to the inside of your knot, keep on pulling, keep on tightening, and that'll just help keep it in place. But it's a really sturdy rope and it doesn't unravel very easily once you get it, once you get it on there tight. So we have one handle, let me make my second one. So I just finished the second rope here, the second handle, and I have it all tied up. It could be finished at this point. Again, you could do the step where you paint the top. You could add some ribbon, some color coordinated ribbon to the middle, hot glue it on and tie it with a bow. I'm gonna show you one that I finished the other day that is just darling. This one I used, we talked about how sometimes I use curtains when I'm looking for fabric at the secondhand store. And this was a fabric curtain that I had found. It was just one curtain, but it was plenty of fabric to do a basket. I painted the top rim. I added the bow. The same kind of handles that we talked about on the first basket that I did but I just think it's so sweet. It's an adorable idea. It's a great way to store your stuff. And even if you don't wanna use it as a picnic basket, this would be a great idea to put as, use as a gift basket. You could put um, someone's gifts in here. You could make it a theme if it's a baby shower or a wedding shower. There are so many different options, but I just think it's the cutest thing. And I would be thrilled if someone showed up at my house with one of these baskets, even if it was empty. So I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great picnic and happy crafting. The world could always use a little more kindness, a bit of patience, some understanding. In complicated or stressful times, great customer service can go a long way. 
Here's to all of those who make sacrifices for the greater good. Thank you for calling Armstrong. My name is Christina. My daughter happens to be one of them. So I'm back with Rosie and Bash, and we are continuing getting ready for our picnic. We are making these cute chip clip, or they could hold your tablecloth down if they are heavy enough. Um, they're just a really cute iron craft for the kids to do to bring along on the picnic. And I don't know about you guys, but we actually do go through a lot of chip clips. We need a lot of them. So this is perfect for us. We're gonna start with some clothes pins, which we already have painted. Bash wanted his red and Rosie's is yellow. And we also have these pom-pom balls, these craft pom-pom balls. I tell every parent I know when their kids are starting to get old enough to want to craft or old enough to start crafting with mom and dad, that these pom-pom balls are one of the best things you can have. These are amazing. You can use them in so many different ways. My kids love using them. If you have pom-pom balls, some craft glue, and some construction paper, you can keep the kids busy for a really long time. So we have some colored pom-pom balls. I've got some little black ones here that I used for my eyes. Bash and Rosie have decided they want to use wiggly eyes, which um, are also at the craft store or even, you know, Walmart, Target, a big box store. And they're just these fun plastic eyes that wiggle around when they move. We are going to add wings to our bugs. So Rosie has some pink wings that we just freehand cut out of foam. Bash's wings are paper, just cut with red paper. And then we have the antenna, which are pipe cleaners. This is also a great craft supply to have on hand for little ones just to make whatever use their imagination. So Bash wants his pink. Rosie's using purple. And then we have these little trays that have glue in them. I have tried every way of using glue with my kids from glue sticks to the glue bottles. I have found that the easiest way for these little ones to use glue is to put it in a small container, even a plastic lid from your cottage cheese container, your sour cream container, um, or even your applesauce lid after you're done eating your applesauce is the best way because they can dip it. This cleans up with soap and water so I don't have to worry about them making a mess with it and it's just the easiest way for them to access their glue. So we're going to get started with our clothes pins and our pom-pom balls and what you guys need to do, this is super easy, you're going to pick out one of your balls, one of your pom-pom balls and you're going to dip it into the glue and just set it on your clothes pin and we're going to put them in a row. One. Now because we're using the craft glue, it's not going to dry as quick as hot glue would, um, but what I like about this is this is something they can do totally on their own, whereas the hot glue, I would have to do a lot of the steps for them. Um, what other colors did you want, buddy? Um, I red. Red? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another red? Another red? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. And we're just going to line them up, make sure that they're on top of the clothespin. I'm going to check on Rosie. Try not to move your balls around because I don't want them to fall off. Did you want one more on there? No. To fill up this empty spot here in the front so we can put the eyes on it? Maybe a pink one or a purple one or I a yellow one? I have a purple one because the purple one gets stuck in the pink one. And it's pink and it's okay. So you need a little this bit of. Thing is the whole thing is glue. The whole thing is glue. Perfect. Except this middle is. Okay. Put it on there. All right. So next we're going to add our antennas. And basically for this, you just need a small piece of the pipe cleaner, depending on how long they want their antennas to be. But you really probably won't need a full piece of pipe cleaner. So we're going to cut yours. And then how big did you want yours to be? 
tiny like that guy? Okay. Oh, you want this guy's antennas? All right, so we need a little bit bigger of a piece. And Rosie, to make the antenna, we're just gonna take your small piece of pipe cleaner and fold it in half. Oh, there will be. We're gonna squeeze it in between. So fold this in half. Take yours, fold it in half, buddy. Squeeze, squeeze it together. Yep, and then see how we kind of curl the outside edges? Curl the outside edges out. <laughs> like this. You've gotta curl your edges, too, to make them look like an antenna, just a little bit at the edge. So we have the antenna, we're gonna add a little bit of the glue. Put it down in here. Yes, yes. Okay, now the next step is going to be to add our wings. Now for this guy, I didn't add any wings, but um, Bash and Rosie want some wings, so. Yes, exactly. Yes, so we're gonna take our wings, and you want to dip them into, you want to dip the edge of your wing, and again, I just freehand cut these um, in a sort of wing shape with a flat edge so we can shove them underneath the balls. Yep, exactly. Here, Bash, take this. Mm-hmm. Put it in your paint. All right, yes, if you're right, Rosie, it is. It's glue, not paint. Thank you. And then we'll just kind of Push them in between the pom-pom ball and the clothespin. Perfect. Thanks, buddy. No, you don't. All right, let's let that guy dry for a minute. Yep. Keep on going. I'm going to help you just push it in a little bit. Yes, we're going to do the eyes next, buddy. Adjust them a little bit. Everything's still kind of wet from the glue. Mama, Next step is the eyes, the final step. And again, we're going to use the wiggly eyes. So we're going to dip them in the glue and add them onto this front, the front pom pom ball. It's okay, bud. It's going to get on your fingers. We can just wash our hands after. Right? Yeah, but we're using clear glue. And it's going to dry clear, so it's perfect. There's one. Good job, Bash. It's sticking to your finger, huh? All right, we need the other eye. Mom, it's sticking to my finger. It was sticking to Bash's finger, too. That's funny. help you. I absolutely will, honey. Good job, Bash. I think Bash's fingers have more glue than the bug, but that's okay, right? We're going to let that guy dry. All my fingers in the glue. Oops. One eye, and then I will help you. There you go. And then your other eye is right there by your arm, honey. I think I can do it too. Give it from your fingers? That's a good idea. Perfect. So cute. Oh, I just got it off with my finger. <laughs> okay, we got it. We got it. So, totally optional whether or not you want to add the wings, what colors you want to use. What you want your eyes to be. No matter what you pick, you're going to get a cute bug that's great for your chip clips or for holding the sides of your tablecloth down. Happy crafting. <laughs>